Hi friends, it's Liz here. Thank you for joining me today. We have a project that we will be making. I recently made this fall themed folio with lots of flip outs and pockets and I thought I would show you what I've done and then I'm going to show you how to make it. Um, I really like how it came out and you only need a file folder and a few junk mail envelopes, which I am sure we all have. So I'm going to show you what I've used. I will have links in the description box below for supplies, but if you have any questions, please leave them below and I'll try and let you know what, um, what the answers are. So I wanted to show you the Digital Collage Club kit that I'm using. This is the um, autumn themed kit and that's what inspired the project. I have some pages from my most recent printables and this is actually from one of my older printables. I thought it would just be nice to combine them because it is all fall themed and I'm of course, really um, happy making that at the moment. So I'll show you the cover first. There's lots of different layering and pockets, etc. So here at the bottom, we've got a little pocket. I've got some ephemera that I also used from Taper Logi, and I will link their shop below as well as a coupon code if you're interested. I've used a lot of their stickers, a lot of their coffee stained paper as well. This piece here is from one of my uh, autumn kits as well. This is from the Digital Collage Club kits, and I used one of the little postcards to make the little pocket as well there. Pull this out, and then you've got a, a pocket there with some stickers, again, from Taperlogy, and um, just some pieces that I cut out of the actual kit from Digital Collage Club. So this is one of the sets of stickers that I've used throughout. I do have an unboxing and a link to everything from Taperlogy in the description box below. So you'll get to see all the goodies that I'm using here um, and you'll also get the coupon code. For Digital Collage Club, I also have a coupon code if you're interested and I will link that one below. All right, so for the um, pocket there, the large pockets on the cover, I have used one of the journal pages from the kit um, just as an additional you know, thing to look at um, and also that you can use for journaling. So on this side, you'll notice there's a little fabric with what looks like um, a stamp image on it, but it is actually this from the Taper Logi. They sent this um, fabric with the sticker sheet that um, attaches to the fabric, which is lovely. This is my first time using this style on a fabric piece and I love how it came out. I'm not a big person that likes to stamp on fabric, but I love this idea of just having the um, sticker on it. This little clip here um, is removable and I thought I would add it because, um, you know, it's easy to take that little piece of fabric off and you can use it some, on something else. This ephemera piece and the stickers, like I mentioned, are all from Taperlogy. Now this little pumpkin we made in a recent video of mine, Creative Ideas Using Paper Punches. I've got many ideas in that video on how to use your paper punches and I will link that below if you haven't seen it. The bunny here is from the Digital Collage Club kit and of course these are my Polaroids. If you've recently seen my videos, I've been using my fall themed Polaroids in a lot of my fall themed crafts and I think they're really cute because they go with anything. So here I just made another little pocket that you can tuck things in and then you flip this over and you've got your large pocket that you can see here on the side. And this um, is also from one of my fall themed kits. I will link everything below, uh, but just so you know, I've used my own printables, printables from Digital Collage Club as well. And then the stickers and some ephemera from Taper Logi, so I don't have to keep saying it. I did stamp a little bit on this uh, pocket here, which as you can see is, um, it's really a, a nice thing to look at through the window. Now here I made another pocket and then I've added some ephemera from the kits. This one's from one of mine. And I really, really like how it all combines together. I love the, um, the autumn themed kit from Digital Collage Club. It really inspired this project. And I will, like I said, link it below. Here you've got this uh, additional window pocket and you pull out more ephemera. I love these florals as well. This is from another one of the Digital Collage Club kits, I believe. And you flip this down and then you've got a little spot to journal or do a little writing. And then you've got pockets on the top and side. So this one pulls out. That's from one of my kits. 
and then the back of this pocket here so you've got like a double pocket on the side and on the back and then you've got more pieces that you can tuck in there and I've just added more ephemera from my kits as well now this little envelope it's from the latest Tim Holtz uh, dies I ended up getting that for my birthday I have a few things actually that I got from my for my birthday from my sister and this is one of them and I absolutely love it um, I, I'll be using that probably a lot this year um, because it's like my favorite little envelope with all the little ephemera pieces. So I'll show you more projects that I'm making with that, but I thought I would add one of those little envelopes in here. And I just decorated it with um, a bunch of different um, ephemera from the kits as well. And uh, I will link my favorite supplies shop below in case you're interested in seeing all the favorite goodies that I love to use. I will have all that linked as well in the description box below. All right, so on this side, we have another little uh, tuck spot. We've got some, you know, more interactive pieces as well. Um, another one of my Polaroids. This is a really nice handmade. It feels like handmade paper, this tag. It's from Taperology. This other embellishment we did make in the video I mentioned on using your paper punches, and I will link that below. Now here I just added ephemera. Uh, this one here is from the seed packet uh, digital print from Digital Collage Club. And then I just added a little, um, another one of the ephemera pieces. And I did make the envelope with that Tim Holtz die. Like I said, I love how cute it is. And uh, it's just perfect for if you like envelopes. That piece was from Taperology. And this is a journal page from DCC. So I really, really like the um, interactive part of this little folio. This one here flips open. So you've got like a window on one side and then another, you know, spot to put like a, a little bit of journaling or a little quote. These tiny stickers also, I love using them and I kind of scattered them throughout. Um, I just think it adds a nice touch to projects, especially when you have little areas that you want to just sort of finish off and you for sure for window anything it's nice to see the sticker through the windows and then on the back here i just have some ephemera some fall themed ephemera and um, again like i said the kits i used i've already mentioned that so super fun and easy to make and all you need is the file folder and a few junk mail envelopes i will be showing you how we make it and um, we'll go through the process in the video I hope you enjoy the video and don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to let me know that you've enjoyed it. Um, I decorated the back a little bit, but I wanted to leave this as flat as I could because, um, you know, in case you're sending it in the mail and load it up with ephemera, it's nice to have, um, you know, something flat to send in the mail. So links to everything will be below. Questions, comments, let me know and let me show you how to quickly put this together. So here's our, uh, our uh, file folder. Now I'm just showing you the size here of the file folder I'm using. I just happened to have some file folders when I was cleaning out, you know, my office space and I thought I would repurpose them. So the first thing I'm going to do here is um, show you where I'm going to be scoring it to make the pockets and then do the different flips that we're going to be using. Now, um, it's it, again, it depends on the size of pocket you want. So I'm not going, going to be too specific about the sizes, um, but just to show you what I've done here. So on the bottom of the uh, file folder, I'm scoring it at um, two and a half. And then I'm just making sure that I get both sides because I know with thicker cardstock like the file folders, sometimes the score lines don't come out too, um, too clear. Okay, so when I open it up, you'll see how we fold that up. And that will be our pockets for the inside of our little folio. All right. So then um, we want to make the flip outs on the inside and outside. And so here you'll see where I'm scoring. And I'm scoring on the side of the file folder that is the longest. So where the tab is that kind of sticks out. This is where I start that score line, so you can see it there. And then I'm flipping it over again to continue that same score line on the other side. And I'll try and put the score, um, the score marks on the screen, um, just in case I forget to, um, to mention them as well. 
So here you'll see that I'm folding the sides that we just scored over onto themselves. And now you'll, you'll start to see the shape and how this takes, um, takes shape for our little folio. So this is my larger tab, as you can see here. Okay, so I'm showing you the lar larger tab, which means it will be on the outside of my folio. So this is the inside where I fold in my pockets, and then we've got the first fold for the cover. And then here, I'm just making sure I fold it on both directions. Now you may notice this is somewhat similar to a project we recently did with a smaller sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper. I will link that tutorial below because it was really fun pocket folio where you could just load it up as well, but it's a smaller version. And um, I did something, of course, a little different with this one with the file folder. And uh, that's kind of what inspired this project was the smaller version that we recently did. I wanted to try it on a larger scale and I thought the file folder would be perfect for that. So here again, I was just showing you the score lines. Uh, we're putting our pockets back in the center. Then this becomes our fold out and the back, instead of folding it towards the back, I'll show you what I'm going to do with it after. I'm making sure that it's nice and flat because we really want everything to uh, fold nicely and we want our paper not to tear. All right, so the next step is choosing our paper for our covers or to cover up our entire um, little um, file folder. This is optional, of course, if you just wanted to distress it or stencil on it, etc., you could do that and then you would be totally finished um, decorating the inside and the outside. But I'm going to use this coffee stained like paper. It is part of one of my printables. Um, I believe it's my most recent printable that I've um, included that um, in it if you're interested. So for the inside, I decided that I was going to use uh, repa repurpose this packaging. I love packaging and repurposing it. And I thought this would be perfect for the project because all I really wanted to do was to cover most of the color of the file folder and sort of give it, um, you know, give the eye somewhere to rest. Um, that's a little different than the color, the manila or whatever color that is vanilla, I guess. Here you've seen that I've got the papers to cover the front. I'm just cutting them up to fit in those little areas. So we've got the um, the file folder part here. If you want to cut out that little piece, then you've got the shape of the file folder tab showing. You don't have to do that, but I'm just going to do it here because I did do it in the original project. And you're just cutting off that little piece there. So I hope you're all doing well. Um, I hope you're enjoying the cooler weather. I know we've had some um, crazy, crazy weather issue, um, weather happening in other places of the world. So I hope everyone's keeping safe. It's so scary when, um, you know, when things start to happen, of course, that we can't control. Um, I'm just showing you again how I've just gone ahead and covered a lot of the flips and flaps and the pockets. Now for the back, I'm going to be flipping that, um, that part of the file folder towards the inside. And so I need to cut off the bottom piece here. I just need to cut it so that I can fold it in a different way. So you'll just see me cutting this um, at the bottom so that I can have my little tuck spot going a different direction on this flap. And um, it's the same thing that I did with the original one I showed you. So I wanted to kind of continue the same uh, process with this one here. So we've got that um, turned over to the other side. So that means that now we've got the little pocket, which now becomes a pocket on the outside of the flap and not on the inside. And again, I'm just going to go ahead and start deciding on what I'm going to use to cover that section. And, um, you know, reminding myself that part of it will be covered, but it doesn't matter. I like to reuse my scraps whenever possible. So I'm going to try and do that for this flap also. 
when I usually make a tutorial, if it's something that has a little more work to it, it does take me a little longer to film the video and I have to do a voiceover. So it's a little bit um, different for me to um, make these tutorials because I often have to um, you know, record them first, like the actual process, and then go back and do the voiceover. So that takes a little bit longer, uh, but I'm hoping that this video doesn't run too, too long. Um, I definitely always like to keep an eye on the time and, um, you know, not making videos that are too long because those also take a long time to load up afterwards. And I don't like to, um, you know, to have that happen. So um, here I'm just showing you that I left the flap on this side. I didn't cut out so you could actually see the tab. I just made it so that it was just a nice straight rectangle um, because it really doesn't matter um, about that tab itself because we're going to cover it up when we add our additional pocket on the inside. And now you can see how it's starting to look like a little folio with all the little flips and flaps. Here, I just made sure to add enough paper just to cover the front of the file folder that you're going to see, because once I close that pocket down, you won't see underneath it. That's where we're, we will tuck things in. And so I just make sure that, um, you know, it glues down properly. I may attach it with some paper clips or something as I go. Another thing I wanted to mention is I will have a few more videos actually coming up showing you the... Um, entries that I received for my birthday giveaway. So thank you to all of you that sent something in. I will be showing those videos very soon. And then of course, I'll be coming back and uh, letting you know the winner of that uh, giveaway. I was so excited for it. It was such a great birthday month celebration. I'm um, going to the mailbox and seeing all the lovely goodies. Uh, and I'm just trying to, um, you know, edit those videos and film them, etc. Because what I do is once I get the items, I wait to open them until I can film the opening. And so that's also a surprise for me when I'm doing it, which is just really, really fun to do. All right. So getting back to this, I've covered everything I wanted to cover. And now I'm taking some of the digital prints. I did print these out a little bit um, um you know, off the um, borders because I wanted the images to be a little bit bigger. Um, and what I'm doing with this particular part is I want to make a pocket at the bottom of our uh, of our other pocket in this folio. And so I'm using this image because it's the same one that I used for the one that I showed you initially. And I want to make sure that I have, um, you know, just the pieces that I want to use for this section. I've been looking at different ways of using digital kits lately and I'm, I'm sort of using them more as ephemera than anything else and I'm really liking how that's turning out. For those of you that are new to my channel, um, I do have playlists with many tutorials and how-to videos. I also have playlists of making projects with one single page that you can, um, you know, add your um, leftover pieces to and make a nice little project and I will also link those videos below in case you haven't seen them. And thank you all so much for your support with the shop. Um, my new digitals are in and I'm really loving how they turned out. Um, I can't wait to show you the projects I'm making with some of the pieces. And I would love to see what you make with them as well. So don't forget to tag me if you are um, you know, making things that either I have shown in a video or using some of my digitals. I would love to see it. And um, I think I'm going to start something um, new in the next little bit. I'll give you more details about it in the next video, but I'm super excited about it because I'm hoping that this is something that um, will also help feature other artists out there that we may not all know or have seen. So I'm hoping that this is something that I'll continue to do going forward. All right, so here I'm just using one of the little tickets that comes in the kit. I did print this one out a little bit larger than, you know, how it is um, designed because I wanted to make it a little pocket on the other side as well. And um, I just used my scissors that cut out those little edges. And now I'm just using my other paper punch to cut out the sides as well. And that's just something that I think it's just so much easier than trying to fussy cut out the little pieces there in the corner. 
I am so excited for, um, you know, the next few months of crafting because it's really, I think it's my favorite months of crafting. Um, I'm really into making fall themed anything. And then as soon as I start to pull out my Christmas items, it's, oh my gosh, it's just even more exciting to do that. So I try to, um, you know, do that also a little bit early because I don't think we have enough time between now and, you know, December to um to get all the crafting that we need done for that so let me know if you're also um, a lover of fall themed crafts and christmas crafts and um you know i do have a few items that i have done a few projects that i've made in the last few years i will try and maybe put a playlist together for the themes i like to look at themed projects because they really do truly inspire me as well all right so for our first flip thingy, we will be needing uh, one of the envelopes I mentioned. I think for this project, we'll probably be needing three. I don't think I've added anything else to it. Um, more than two. Sorry, more than three. And so what I've done here is I've taken one of the window envelopes. I folded a part of it to the back, as you can see. And now I'm picking my paper to decorate it because I'm going to be covering it up as much as I can. Now you can just stamp on it um, if you wanted to make the process a little bit easier, uh, but I like to add a little bit of um, decorative paper, especially if it's a, a theme of it, it all goes together and it ends up looking really nice. Uh, what else did I want to mention? Right, um, I do have a playlist with many other ideas on how to use junk mail envelopes that's what we call them um, i've made journals with them i've made different types of um, you know um, little ephemera holders and just different ways of using a junk mail envelope in your creative projects you can add them to your journals or use them on their own to send to friends once you've completely decorated and embellished etc so i will link that playlist below in case um, this is your first time um, on my channel and you haven't seen those and I really love, I think for me, it's the sound, that the crinkly sound that the envelopes make more than anything. And I think I love working with junk mail envelopes for that reason. They just, um, they really have a nice crinkly sound to them. And I really enjoy, um, you know, kind of <clears throat> hearing those sounds when I'm working. And also just when I go back with a project that I've done and just kind of having that, you um, that be part of the experience right uh, when you're um when you're crafting i definitely know and have learned in the last few years that i love the sound of paper and it's just uh, it really relaxes me so i think that's why more and more i love to create and craft and a lot of the times i'm not able to film the process because i'm so inspired at that moment to make something and i'm just so relaxed with the sounds that i forget to you know hit record so hopefully though i'll be able to do a few more of these um tutorials and hopefully not as long um, I know I ask this often um, with you know to all of you do you prefer shorter videos where I don't show you how I decorate where I just show you the basics uh, but a lot of the times many of you ask for the decorating process and so that's why these videos take a little longer especially for me because I do plan them out and I try to cut off as much as I can that I don't think you need to see um, you know, for example, gluing on the um, the envelopes or every piece that I attach to it, etc. Um, if you see the process, that full process, then, you know, the videos would take so long. But I like to sort of show you the, um, the easiest way that I think um, you could go ahead and make the projects. So one thing I discovered after I finished this envelope is that my little pocket here is going to kind of impede the envelope flip down that I wanted to do the, this little flip down here um, but if I put it on this side I don't have a lot of space to pull things out um, because when I tuck things into the envelope itself it'll make it difficult to tuck things out so 
I think what I'm doing here is I'm going to be tearing up the pocket a little bit so I can have a little more room to bring the envelope flap down. And I did want to keep this part in the video because, you know, a lot of the times it's one of those trial and error things, right? You'll make things one time. And if it's one of those, um, you know, projects that you're tearing paper or you're cutting paper, sometimes the sizes change. And so for me, it's just figuring out, you know, how to fix it quickly and, you know, it still looks good. So that's why I wanted to kind of leave that here. And the other thing, I used a digital um, for this project. I used digital so that if you wanted to make a very similar project to the one I've made, you can. Um, because you'll find most of these items already available somewhere and it'll end up looking very similar to the one I'm showing you in the video. And so that's why I also like to use a lot of items that I know are accessible to many of you. All right, this video went on a little longer than I wanted it to and I don't have time to continue um, the editing process at this point. So I'm going to leave it here with this flip down and then part two will be finishing it off. I hope you've enjoyed the video so far. Let me know what you think, if you like the entire lengthy process of the video, or if you would have preferred to just seen a quick short version of everything that I had already pre-decorated and pre-done and just kind of attached everything together. Anyways, thank you for joining me. Um, I will come back very soon with part two, and I've got so much more exciting things coming on my channel very soon. I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for stopping by.